Hey everybody, welcome back to another Mr. O math lesson. I know it's been a little while, but that's because this program totally screwed up for a while. Um, today's a little bit longer. We're going to analyze line plots. There's a lot going on here, a lot of vocabulary. We need to make sure that we're really focusing on what our words mean, the way that we say words, because the way we interpret the question is going to change what kind of answer we have. So we got to be really careful going on with this. So <clears throat> first thing is, what is a line plot? Well, it's a line that we plot data on. That's it, a line, plot and data. Now, you'll see these with either dots or Xs. Uh, we use Xs a lot. The big thing is it needs to be uniform. When I read across, I should see one there, two over here, three, all right? Everything should be kind of uniform to the best of your ability. So, this question asks, um, oh, let me just find, is this the one that's gonna let me do this? Yep, nice. They said several students uh, were asked how many blocks they walked to school each day. The results are shown. How many students were asked this question? This is the easiest type of question you're going to get in this um, type of math. Literally every single one of these dots is a student. So, you know, you have four here, five here, five here, eight, two, one. I got a fast 10, another fast 10. So I got 20 plus four plus one is five. 25 students were asked this question. That's just how easy this stuff is. Read it, interpret it. The hardest part is reading the question, because then I could say things and to really mess you up. Like, well, not, oh, speaking of mess ups. Oh, it doesn't bring it back. That's sad. I guess we'll have to talk about it somewhere else. Okay. So, <laughs> uh, what we have up here is what's known as a data table. Data table holds all of our information that we need. What's the one problem I have with data tables? They're unorganized. Notice none of those numbers are any kind of order, things like that. Everything's in a hodgepodge. Very hard to see. So it's kind of not the easiest thing to create a line plot and... Uh, you know, do it from some, to make this, this, without this being organized. So, the first thing I do is I organize these. And we're not going to get into really going nuts with this today, because that's tomorrow's lesson. What you need to know, well, actually, it was today's lesson. I'm making the same video on the same day. A little inside trader info. So, what do we have here? We have this data table. Got to organize it we're gonna make something called a frequency chart. And a frequency chart literally tells you how frequently something happens. Now to do it correctly, the first thing I'm gonna do is find out my smallest value, or my least value that I have here. So I see I have a half, and I'm gonna read all the way across until I see a value that's less than half. And I don't. So, one half is my least value. Now I gotta find my next to least value. So, half, three quarters. Mm, I don't see anything less than three quarters yet. All right, three quarters is next. All right, one greater than three quarters. Let's see, we have one. Nothing less than one. Next, I use those. One and a half. One and a quarter. All right, nothing less than one and a quarter. Back to the drum board. And yes, you start every time. Always check. One and a half. Never think that it's okay not to look back and check every other number that's gone on. All right, we have one and a half. And then I saw a different value up there, so I'm going to do it again. So I have one and a half. What's greater than one and a half? So far, nothing. Three. So three is greater. Now I'm going to look at the frequency that these happen. How many times do each of these come up? 
When I do this, I'm going to put a little line through each of the numbers. I'm still going to be able to read it, but I will put a little line there so I know I used it, so I don't use it twice by accident. But you need to be able to read these numbers, so don't go nuts. So I'm going to look for all the one and a halfs first. Right off the bat, there's one. One and a half gets a tally. I mean, uh, sorry, one half gets a tally. And start again. Half. Keep going. And that's it for half. Now I'm going to go to three quarters. One, two. I'm just going to go a little ahead because I don't want this video to last forever. It's going to be long, not going to lie. Three, four, so two more. Normally I do these one at a time. Five, or one, whichever way you want to look at it. All right, my next value is going to be one. Notice the more I'm doing this, the less I'm going to have to look at, right? So my ones, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Again, you're going to do this one at a time. All right, so one and a quarter. One, two, three. One and a half. One, two, three, one. Notice I can still read every single one of those numbers up there. And I have all my boxes used. Now I would go to create my line chart. I'm not going to show you how to do it in this video because that's the next one. But as you can see, if I'm looking at my frequency table, at one and a half, I should have two dots. One and a half, I have two dots. Three and a quarter, I should have five. One, two, three, four, five, and so on and so forth. You can see it here a lot better here than you can here. You try to organize this or answer questions without organizing it, you're going to have the hardest time. This, I can see each value clearly. This is all mixed up. It's like a messy room. Clean it up. Then you can do stuff. Now, with that being said, I want to talk about an outlier. It's a place where we stick liars. What? Nothing? I know, it's terrible. So anyway, an outlier is a value that doesn't fit with the rest. See how these are all grouped together? That's because they're very similar. Obviously, you know, there's not much going on that's different between them. This doesn't really fit. He's the odd man in the group. He is a percent error. He is something that is like, um, just doesn't belong. So you're kind of inquisitive and you're like, well, why wouldn't it belong? And this is how we look at data. We're like, well, where, where's, where are things going wrong? Where are mistakes being made? Or maybe this is like a super genius kid that you're like, wow, you know, this kid's way above grade level. Maybe we should make things a little harder for him or her. So let's take a look here. Mr. Rice students ran a 40-yard dash in the following times and seconds. All very slow, I will have you know. These kids are terrible. Just kidding. I have no idea. So, again, I have a data table here because I have a ton of data and it's all unorganized. They want to know how many race times are recorded. Seriously. Well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They're all lined up in two rows. Eight times two, 16. Gotta love questions like that. Let's hope this one's a little harder. Use the line plot to show this data. They want to know which time occurred the most often. Love these questions because now I can use my data. When I look at the people, the students, because each one of these represents a student, they want to know which time was happening the most often. Well, it's going to be the one that has the greatest amount of students in it. It's not the greatest number. The greatest number 
is th seven and three tenths, not seven point three. All right, it's going to be the greatest number of students that were there. So five students ran at seven and one tenth seconds. This is the one that happens the most often because it happens one, two, three, four, five times, which is two times more than anyone else. The other thing that I wanted to show you in uh, the other example was that I wanted to ask other questions about this. So I could say, how many students ran it in seven seconds or less? Now, if I said seven seconds or less, I would include seven and look backwards. And here's three. Well, I should get my pointer out. Three, two, one, three, five, six. Six students ran it in seven seconds or less. But that changes if I say who ran it in less than seven seconds. Less than seven seconds does not include seven because it has to be less than it. So in this case, it's only three students. So the way that you ask questions and the way that they're worded really do change what kind of answer you're looking for. I mean, I could even ask something as crazy as, um, you know, how many students ran uh, the 40-yard dash in seven seconds or less, but not six and eight-tenths? So that's like a two-step problem. So I would have to first look at all of this, but then not use that. And then we get five. So you really have to pay attention to your reading, and you have to pay attention to what the question is asking you. All right, here we go, new order of cheese. One thing I wanna look at first, titles, very important, they tell you what you're looking at. Here we're looking at orders of cheese. The second thing, how it's being measured. This is being measured in pounds. All these have to be labeled, otherwise we don't know what these X's or dots stand for. So, how many orders of cheese does the line plot show? It's a counting thing, two, four, uh, three, Two, one, I got six, nine, ten, twelve. Boom. They're my favorite. Can't get those wrong. If you can count, you can get it right. Which amount of cheese was ordered the most often? Okay, well, then which one has the most selections? Well, it's half a pound because there's four here. What if I said the least? If I said the least, I'd be looking for one that doesn't have many. I wouldn't say zero because that wasn't ordered at all. So the one and a quarter wouldn't work. But that one and one half pound, uh, oh boy, what'd I do? Oops, I took a picture. Cancel. Um, that one and a half has one order. So that happened the least amount of times. Um, how many more orders of cheese were... Do I want to do this one yet? I don't know. I kind of want to talk about something else. Oh, I do. The one and one half is not considered an outlier here. Even though it's all by itself, it doesn't have much room between one and one and one half. There's only a quarter in between. It's not like there's like three or four, things like that. So we can stop there. It's not an outlier. All right, so then we have how many more orders of cheese were for three quarter pounds or less than for one pound or more? So I got to find three quarters or less. Here's three quarters. I have to use it because it says three quarters or less or one pound and more. Here my value is three. Here my value is four, six, nine. Nine orders minus three orders, six orders. All right, Jerome studied the feather lengths of some adult fox sparrows. <sighs> a fox and a sparrow, hmm, interesting, very interesting to me. Is it a fox that flies? Is it a sparrow, is it a bird that walks? Quite interesting. I love what they choose to put in these books. How long are the longest feathers in the data set? So here, all I'm doing is looking for the greatest value, two and a half. Right? Let's start there. Two and a half. See if I can find something greater. Yep, oh, here's two and three quarters. Two and three quarters. Let's look. We're not done. Might be larger. 
two and three quarters. Okay. That is the largest value. So it's two and three quarters inches. How many feathers are two and a quarter inches or longer? So now, when I answer this question, I'm looking for anything that is two and a quarter or more. The way I'm going to answer this is I'm going to circle things. Two and a half is two and a quarter because I could still see the values, not two. It's very important to make sure that you can see your data. If you scribble over it, how are you ever going to read it? Okay. And now it's a matter of counting. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 15 uh, feathers are 2 and a quarter inches or longer. Boom. How do you know that? I, I looked at the data. I mean, what, what explanation do they want? I, I looked at the data. I know what's what two and a quarter is, and I know what values are greater. I mean, you could write that. You'll get full credit. Anyway, that's it for today's video. Next one's going to be at making these yourself.